when you think of the ultimate California road trip, the first thing that probably comes to mind is Highway 1. It weaves up the California coast, through the hills and cliff sides, with incredible scenery throughout the drive. But you know what? Highway 1, psh, it's been done to death. Old news. So we're taking Highway 1 and adding 394 to it and road tripping Highway 395. Highway 395 covers a ton of California and there's so much to see along the way. It takes you up the eastern side of the state and follows the base of the snow-capped Sierra Mountains. Along the way you pass through so many charming little towns and of course some incredible natural wonders. There's crystal clear lakes nestled in the mountains, incredible rock formations, and of course plenty of delicious food stops to make along the way. Well, good morning, adventurers. Good morning. So our first stop on our Highway 395 road trip takes us to this location. No, that is not a freaking green screen behind us, you guys. <laughs> Nor is it Mars. This is the Alabama Hills. And holy cow, they are more beautiful than we ever imagined they would be. And for any of you wondering, no, this is not at all what Alabama looks like. No. We've been through there, confirmed. This is something very different. This area is so amazing though. It's these rolling hills with these epic rock formations set right in front of the Sierra Mountains. In fact, right behind us is Mount Whitney, the highest point in all of the lower 48. Right there, over 14,000 feet. Hi, up there. Oh my god. But speaking of green screens, this place is known for more than just its natural beauty. There have actually been countless movies filmed in this location, probably thousands. Way back in the early 1900s, they started to film westerns here and they just pumped out western after western. All the big stars were making movies out here. Some individual guys made like 60 plus movies out here. In fact, this road right here is called movie road yeah. because this is the road that everyone uses to get out to their filming locations. To get things started, this is kind of the iconic photo spot. This is actually from a scene in Iron Man. Tony Stark stood right here and then I think a bunch of missiles blew everything up back here. All right, y'all, let's go see how the West was won. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. I owe Silva. Away. <laughs> How far are we going with this? <laughs> to here, that's it. Yeah, that's I'm it. done. It's as far as we're willing to go with that bit. Well, we're about two minutes into our drive into the Alabama Hills, and y'all, it's stunning. It's so cool and wild and unlike, I think, any other formations we've ever seen. We're venturing off into the brush to uh, find a very special rock. What could be so special about a rock? Oh, you guys are gonna learn about it in about two seconds. <laughs> yeah. All about it from Mr. Eric. In the year 1990, Val, Earl, and Rhonda ran up on this very rock to escape the evil creatures lurking in the ground below. That's right, y'all. The movie Tremors was filmed right here, baby. The movie was actually filmed all over the place, but there's one key scene where they get stuck on the rock, the three of them, and they have to spend the night. Then they found these sticks on the side of the rock, and they ended up pole vaulting their way out of here. What's funny is that those other rocks that they pole vault across, those were made up, and they ended up just building those. It's all fake news. Yeah. But this rock is real, dang it. I am having the freaking time of my life, you guys, because I grew up with Trimmers. My, me and my brother Brian watched it all the time. It was on like USA Network on TV all the time. We know every line of the movie. <laughs> Confirmed, they know every freaking line of the movie. Yeah, so when we watch it together, both of us are literally just like having a contest to see who can quote the most lines from the movie. Or even when they're not watching it, when they're just sitting around the dinner table. Yeah. All right, we've been on this rock long enough. I'm sure the Graboids have probably left by now, right? Uh, <laughs> oh, Tommy! Did you learn nothing from all the movies? Melvin! Those mother humpers. Come on, Rhonda. You're I Rhonda now. Rhonda was a lot more graceful than that, come on. Nailed it. We 
just found the creepiest little desert bug over here. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, the shape, the color, everything. It's unlike anything I've ever yeah. seen. And I'm it's... pretty sure he has oh. wings too. I don't like him. He's got a mean red head. Yeah. I've got a red head, but I'm nice. He's not. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> hey, look, this is just like that shot in Tremors. <laughs> it's coming for you. Run! We gotta get the big thing. Dun -a, dun -a, dun -a, dun -a. Oh, wait, that's Jaws. actually staying in this little town right over the hills called Lone Pine. It is so adorable. It's just this little strip with all of these adorable little wooden buildings. They look straight out of the Wild West. But there is actually one place in particular that we are itching to check out before we leave. We'll see you there. And yes, for those of you wondering, I can drive Ruby now. Yeehaw! This is the Museum of Western Film here in Lone Pine. And man, this is a must see when you come to the area because as we've mentioned, tons of movies have been filmed in this area and in the Alabama Hills nearby, but everything is basically preserved and commemorated here. They have props from all kinds of movies all throughout the ages, every kind of Western you could imagine. Hopalong Cassidy, they've got John Wayne, they've got a bajillion guys that I'd never even heard of. Man, it was a different time back then, huh? <laughs> Yeah, those old westerns, man, that was like the thing, it seemed like. Yeah, it was crazy. They made so many. And I, I was never really a huge western fan, at least not the old ones, so I haven't really seen a lot of them. But, man, if you like westerns, this is the place to come. But they have a lot of modern movies here. Like, they have the stagecoach that they custom built for Django Unchained. It's pretty rad to see it in real life. Yeah, it was donated by Quentin Tarantino himself. <laughs> This is the part of the museum that I came here to see. Can you believe they have all this stuff from the Tremors movie? Believe it or not, these are the actual props from the movie. <laughs> this is the worm that they used in all four Tremors movies. <laughs> they have the little walking ones, they have the snake ones over here. If you guys have never seen this movie, you gotta watch it because it has some of the best special effects and like monster effects that I've ever seen in my life. California road trip continues. We got Ruby all hooked up because we're not pulling any mountain passes or hills today, I think. Yeah. Which if you caught our last video, you know that we had to disconnect Ruby because we went up so many mountains and it was just too hard on the old gal. So we had to drive separately, which sucked. But today, that is not the case. We get to enjoy the about one hour drive together with amazing mountain views the whole way. Overwhelming. Literally like a hundred people behind you. <laughs> you can't get through anywhere. I need my bread! We are officially back on the road and headed through the town of Bishop. And one stop you have to make when you come through here is this Eric Schatz Bakery, which is surprisingly the nickname I call the bathroom in the morning. Jeez. <laughs> I knew you were going to make some joke like that. I was waiting for it. This place is wild. It is floor to ceiling covered in every sort of baked good you can ever dream of. Every type of bread I think that exists in the world is here. They have a whole room filled with sweet baked goods like pull apart breads and cakes and all kinds of things. I am a bit overwhelmed by all of the options. But they have an area over there where you can get your own sandwich made. I think we're gonna do that. These ladies back here are no nonsense. <laughs> they are just here to make your sandwich. It's yeah. a little intimidating. All of a sudden, they all just lined up and they said, next person, next person, next person. I was like, ah, I don't know. I freaked out. I, I said number 14 instead of number four. I didn't know what was happening. You guys, they just put out more samples. <laughs> here, it's a one biter. Get after it. No, that's your specialty. This is how I do. I'm 
It tastes like a Christmas candle. It's so <laughs> yummy. Good? It's so cinnamony. It tastes oh like how you gosh. want a Christmas candle to taste. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so that was their original pull away. Super nutmeggy clove kind of in there, I think. Very good. It has mace in there. Wowee. That's a burst Man, of flavor. These things are big. I don't know if we can <laughs> handle all that. I wish you could feel how heavy these are, y'all. It's like doing a weightlifting class. Sweet, sweet pastrami. As expected, the meat is delicious, the bread is delicious, they got little like caraway seeds up in there. And uh, I love that all the greens are so fresh. You know, no nasty iceberg lettuce here. Just really fresh greens, tomato, and meat. We have to go over yet another mountain pass, and we don't really want to do that in Clementine, so we left her back at a campsite. We disconnected Ruby, and we are just flying over these hills, baby. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ruby takes them much better than Clementine does. Oh, yeah. She's a freaking <laughs> blast, you guys. But we're just winding through all these hills. It's definitely got Death Valley vibes, but at the end of this road is something very, very special. One of the oldest of this thing in existence. The oldest. The oldest. No, not one of the oldest. The oldest. The oldest. And that is what we are heading down here to see. And by down there, we mean up there. Because we're climbing, yeah. baby. Yeah. This is the Bristlecone Pine Forest. And would you believe me if I told you that these trees back here are not just centuries old, they're millennia um, old, and not just millennia, millennia <laughs> old, and not just one, not two, not three, but four plus thousand year old trees. These little beauties are the oldest trees in the world. And man, they look it. They are twisted. If a tree could get arthritis, this is what it would look like. <laughs> I feel like it looks like what my hair looks like blowing in the wind. <laughs> Wait, I know. Now I am an ancient bristlecone pine. This is that really obscure yoga pose, the bristlecone pine pose. Yeah. We came here on a Tuesday, kind of an hour before sunset, and we have the entire place to ourselves. But man, you have to drive up a very steep mountain pass to get here, as you guys saw. The plus side of that is that when you get to the top, it is freaking magical. So make sure you take your time, stop the little turnouts. Plan for a few hours here, maybe even a whole day, because there are so many trails, there are so many roads you can drive off into. Definitely come to see these trees in person, though. They're like nothing you've ever seen. They're like on another planet. If alien trees came and visited the Earth, <laughs> this is what they would maybe look like. Maybe these are aliens. Yeah. We don't know. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is how these bristle cones start. This is a tiny little bristle cone. It's got a little sign saying, please stay off me, people keep stepping on me. <laughs> Poor little guy. <laughs> so this turns into that. <laughs> Holy cow. This elevation is no joke, man. <laughs> It's hard to walk, 10, hard to breathe. Feet, woo -wee. Yeah, part of the way that they date some of the trees in this area is that apparently the soil erodes away about a foot every thousand years and it exposes the roots of the tree. So they can use that as kind of a measure to say how old the tree might be. Here's a good example of the root erosion. So apparently the tree line used to be like three feet up there and the soil has slowly eroded away and revealed the roots. So now the roots are just completely exposed on this old thing. These are the remains of a big old tree that fell in 1676. And would you believe that at that point in time, it was over 3000 years old. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> can you believe it's still here? Can we like suck something out of that and inject it in ourselves so yeah. we can live longer? So we can live 3000 years. <laughs> this is a really good example of the rings of the tree, which is how they date it. If you look really closely at it, you can see all these tiny little rings. Apparently an inch of it represents about a hundred years. So that gives you just an idea of how long this thing was sitting there growing away. Up and we're heading to the Mammoth Lakes area and you know honestly 395 has been surprisingly flat ever since we got out of Death Valley except for right now today right here <laughs> it has been a steady climb out of Bishop and uh, 
We've got Ruby attached this time. We didn't unattach her, so Clementine is going slow. But I think we're gonna make it. We've got her in low gear. We've got the AC off. Luckily, the weather is pretty nice outside, so when we have the windows down, there's a nice breeze. And of course, the scenery is just getting more and more beautiful, man. California has not let us down, you guys. I mean, just miles and miles and miles of epicness. And you think it can't get prettier, and then you turn a corner or you pass over a summit, and it's even more beautiful somehow. We officially made it up the climb to this magnificent spot, y'all. This little beauty behind me is Convict Lake, and it is named that because a bunch of convicts escaped. They came around here, a posse came after them, there was a huge shootout. Most people, it sounds like, died. Some of the convicts got away, but they were promptly caught. Today, luckily, I don't think we'll see any convicts here, no big shootouts or anything like that. But the legend goes, if you swim out too deep, the dead convicts will pull you down. Is that real? No, I just made that up. Oh, it sounds, sounds real. Sounds pretty good though. Yeah. Let's make it real. Tell all your children that when they come here. I'm really curious how cold this actually is because it's fed by all that snow that melted up there, I believe. There's still some snow up there. Can you believe that? I cannot, considering it's been so beautiful and sunny these past few days, man. But uh, all right, get on in. No, Come you on, go first. Me? Me? Okay. Go for it. One? Yeah. Ah! Oh, hi! Oh Ooh. no! It's cold. It's very cold. <laughs> Ooh, that gets the heart pumping, and the the blood going. She wore her bathing suit, thinking she was gonna swim in it, but now I'm not so sure. <laughs> I should have just worn swimsuits on my feet. Yeah. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Is that some kind of joke? All right, Eric thinks he's getting in here. It's mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Is that what you say? Oh my gosh. Oh my God. That's cold. That's very cold. Like might be doing damage to my nerves, kind of cold. Well, now you gotta stay out there. You got halfway in. Oh. I couldn't get past this part. <laughs> oh my God. That's the top coldest water I've ever been in. Do you feel alive now? That is like an ice bath. So we are actually in the uh, Mammoth Lakes area, and obviously the whole area is dotted with lakes just all over the place, and they are all so different. And if you have enough time, definitely go see as many as you can. But we were just kind of passing through on our way up north, and uh, this one I think is one of the most beautiful. And the easiest to access from 395. It's literally two miles off of the highway. A lot of people come to this lake to fish, so you're gonna see tons of people all along the shore with their rods camped out waiting to get a bite. But that means you have to watch out for fish hooks, so don't swim near where people are fishing. and Make sure you wear some foot gear. That's why I have these little footies on. She's got her Tevas there. Yeah. Because there are hooks and stuff all over the place. Yeah, we read that sometimes they get stuck in the rocks in the water and you can step on them. That would hurt a lot. Just on this path, we even saw what looked like a bat that was caught in a fishing line in a tree. I'm not sure how that happened. We were kind of puzzling over it. <laughs> how the physics there work, but uh, pretty wild stuff. We made it to our campsite for the next few days and we got here just in time for sunset. Oh my god. Check gosh. this out. Our RV is actually parked way down there and they have all these different trails you can get up to get like epic lookouts. Boy, is this place magical. It's called Willow Springs Resort and it's just north of Mono Lake. There's nothing, no towns or anything, I think for 10 or 15 miles either direction. So you are very secluded out here. But we've got our little spiked seltzers. We got a great view, good company. And we've got an awesome adventure tomorrow that we're gonna be doing to tomorrow. So good night. Eloquent as always. <laughs> Well, good morning, y'all. We really wanted to go check out a hot spring before we leave the area. Yeah, Convict and... Lake uh, was so cold, we <laughs> yeah. wanted to find some warm water. <laughs> yeah, but there's tons of them off of 395. This one came highly recommended. This is Travertine Springs. Look at this view, you guys. It's friggin' insane. But this one's a little weird. It's not really marked exactly where the pools are. We kind of read a guide online and I pinpointed kind of where they are, <laughs> but they're off in this wilderness somewhere. <laughs> we found the main ones, but there were a lot of people at them. So now we're in search of the secret ones. Oh, I, th I think I found one. <laughs> There's a hole with oh. water in it? Well, check this one out. <laughs> Most importantly, nobody else is here. And it's nobody actually deeper than I thought. I thought it was only gonna be like six inches deep. That's hot. 
I'm really scared this bottom is gonna be, oh no, it's not too squishy. Okay. Oh, awesome. it's nature's hot tub, this is amazing. Oh baby, that is very nice. Oh. All right. Yeah, y'all, the mornings up here are very crisp. It's in the 50s or so, so it's a little chilly, but oh, this is perfect in the sun's coming in. It is not too bad, especially now that the sun's come out. I'd rather do it in this temperature, not in like freezing cold snow outside temperature, because the minute you step outside of the tub, you're freaking numb. <laughs> yeah, we're not really into the like cold, hot <laughs> no, stuff. No, not really. <laughs> yeah, hot springs are always like um, iffy for us because you can see all these little creepy crawlies inside the water, so you're sharing this water with uh, a lot of other bugs. There's spiders crawling all over the place. <laughs> you just gotta embrace it. <laughs> we're the biggest bugs. Yeah. You will see a handful of nude people probably when you come here. And uh, I don't know if I'm too comfortable with that, mainly because all this dirt that I'm sitting on, <laughs> you know, it just seems a little weird. <laughs> I feel like if there are healing properties and stuff, it's gonna get through your swimsuit. You're gonna be fine. Yeah, view is freaking spectacular. We got snow-capped peaks over there. Holy cow, man. This is one of the more magical spots we've yeah. been to. And shh, nobody knows about this tub. They're all up at the tub up there. You can't even see this one when you walk in. We'll pinpoint this in the description and all the other secret tubs. Ooh. Do I look comfortable? <laughs> Yeah, it's not really just, a good place to sit. I was sit. about to say, you're sitting against really pointy rocks. Ah, nature. <laughs> so there's the main spring up at the top, and it's got these three separate pools. The water runs down the rock into the first pool and then drains into the other ones. But the downside is that one's going to be very crowded because it's right next to the parking lot. And there's actually a little hot springs tub in the parking lot that you can check out. We didn't test it, but it was steaming and stuff, so it must be pretty warm. And then if you go further down there, there's a tub that's a little bit colder, but it's probably the most picturesque tub in the whole area. It's full of a bunch of little creepy crawlies, like thousands of them. <laughs> so we opted to uh, find a different pool. Well, we had a blast exploring Highway 395. Of course, there are tons of other epic drives in California, but we feel like this one is a lot more underrated. And as you guys saw, it has beauty at every turn. It's got so many charming little stops you can make along the way to delicious food. Oh yeah, and we didn't even scratch the no. surface, y'all. If you've been in this area, you know there are so many things that we didn't get a chance to go to. Many more mountain peaks, many more lakes, cool ghost towns, more hot springs. I mean, more of everything. Yeah, the highlight for us was the Alabama Hills. If you can make it just to that, then it is 100% worth oh, it. Such a cool area, and I can't believe that I had never heard about it in my entire yeah. life. But we are headed further up north. We've got some epic adventures coming up. We're not going to let the cat out of the bag about that. We're going to keep you guys in suspense, Ooh. but it's going to be like nothing we've ever done before. <laughs> so many adventures. I love it. I do feel like it's kind of like old times. Yeah. We used to go exploring the world. We're back on the road, baby. Yeah. And Clementine is being great and she's going to keep being great. Yes. Goodbye, adventurers. We'll see you on the road. <laughs>